Hello from Paris, I'm Joshua Graham, Show Studios Fashion Features Editor, and today I want to talk about three brands that really played with this idea of upcycling this week. Um, that's Balenciaga, Marine Serre, and Hodakova. I want to start with Balenciaga because it's the biggest of the three brands and it's really Caring's crown jewel. Creative director Demna, who's been there since 2015, it's no secret that he's been kind of wrought with controversy in the past couple years, prompting him in interviews to talk about how he wants to pull away from the stunts and the schemes and, and really focus on the garments. This season, he did that quite literally. The first sign of this I'll call it a thrifty approach to design, was with the invitations to Balenciaga VIPs, which was a piece of kitsch that Demna himself sourced from eBay. At the show, attendees entered this immersive space with 360 degree screens that when the first models walked out, started projecting this evolution of AI images going from natural landscapes to cityscapes from day to night. A real Demna trope is reflecting the trends or, or, or the ideas that are around him. And I know I've been inundated at nauseum with this kind of art in the last couple of years on, on my social media feeds. Looking at the garments, again, this real thrifty approach harkened back to Demna's Margiela inspired days at Vetmont taking old garments, old materials, and reworking them into something new. This really worked here with things like this dress that was crafted from old underwear, um, bras and panties kind of sewn together into this like form-fitting, body-hugging dress. Uh, faux fur was treated with resin to make it look really aged and to give it almost a stiffness. Shoulder pads were sewn into hips that Demna called in the show notes hippolettes, and it gave this really angular, interesting silhouette to sequin evening wear. Another idea that's been really central to Demna from his days at Vetmont to Balenciaga has been exploring materialism and consumerism. Here you can see that in his reworked Balenciaga dust bags, you know, the dust bags that carry um, the brand's very expensive leather goods and turning them into garments like this top and, and skirt. You know, he's transformed this this symbol, this aspirational symbol into, into an outfit. Another detail that ran throughout the collection was Balenciaga shopping tags kind of poking out of, of garments and it immediately made me think of this rinse and repeat idea that's maybe untold in fashion of, of buying wearing, returning, because everything is so expensive, because it's so unattainable that this is this is the only way to kind of engage with it like that. Models also carried these big bags kind of adorned with, again, these, these kitschy elements, you know, keychains, rings, um, little Eiffel Towers. And I know that Balenciaga has really played with this idea of curated eccentricity in the past, but for some reason in this collection, I mean, at best, I saw it as superficial and at worst, incredibly annoying. I immediately thought about this one TikToker who constantly ends up on my feed, whose entire um, account and content kind of revolves around them and their friends being these Balenciaga clones, making fun of, of the plebs around them, you know, the people who wear Adidas Sambas and follow a different kind of trend. And this really, to me, is the universe that Demna has, has cultivated, you know, um, Balenciaga vampires whose social cachet rests entirely in, in their ability to blow their cash on all black, giant, oversized sunglasses. The irony there being they've ultimately just become a clone of the creative director himself. There's nothing really individualistic about him. And this isn't a critique on Demna, because actually I've always been quite a staunch supporter of Demna as a designer. I think he's really talented, and I think his ideas come from a really genuine and authentic place. Um, you only have to look at his couture collections to really understand that. I am, however, feeling a bit cynical after watching this show, and maybe it's just the shallowness of this critique of consumerism and, and consumption that I feel becomes devoid when you look at who's actually engaging with it. You know, it's the Kim K's of the world. It's that echelon that really stand for nothing more than consumption in the first place. I think if any brand really needed a refresh this season, it was probably Balenciaga. And I mainly say that because 
of the independent designers who have presented this week who were also playing with really interesting things, um, notably Marine Serre. Sustainability has always been really central in her practice and that was very evident here. The collection was dumped ground control after the show location, which is a former railway shed that's been transformed into what the press knows called a third space, you know, a place for people to gather, to hang out, to meet, to work, that isn't work, that isn't home. Of course, the space was completely marinified with, with Marine Serre Records, Marine Serre Cafe, Marine Serre Florists. I was sitting at um, the Marine Serre Cafe where the tables were decked out with these, again, these thrifty mugs, each individual and stamped with the Marine Serre Crescent logo, which was a very cute touch. Um, the experience when models came out, I kind of saw as as the ultimate exercise in people watching, you know. Everyone was wearing, you know, the Marine Serre crescent stamped on everything from denim to workwear to evening wear to sportswear. Uh, but every model really came off as, a, as an individual, you know, people commuting to work, moms and their babies on a walk, um, two friends grabbing coffee or someone running errands and getting groceries. The garments were really typical of what you expect from Marine Serre, primarily starting with the technical fabric sportswear. Um, you know, she's always been very vocal in saying that she designs with realism in mind, uh, a real wardrobe for women to tackle the day in. And while evening wear was present, especially in the last two looks that were quite sculptural, one of them like angel wings almost, what the collection was really defined by was this ease of the everyday. She upcycled vintage scarves into these flowing day dresses. Something that I really appreciated was the bubble hem, which I think we've seen a lot this, this week in Paris, but this time cut really short. I think a sign of the less than opulent times that we find ourselves in versus the kind of giant La Croix bubble skirts that, that spring to mind anytime I see that silhouette. I really viewed that as this jubilant idea of of glamour, of this yearning for glamour, of this yearning for some fun in fashion, you know, considering we live in such, such bleak times. And it's this idea of fun and this idea of community that made me feel a lot less cynical about the upcycling that Marine Serre did versus the upcycling that really defined Balenciaga's collection. Um, you know, it, it was almost like a beacon of hope among among the chaos we find ourselves in. Finally, I want to talk briefly about Hodakova. Founded by Swedish designer Ellen Hodakova in 2021, the brand has really become a, a national treasure for, for Sweden's cool girls with the signature bag created from upcycled leather belts that when I was in Stockholm last year, I mean, so many girls were carrying it and so many were carrying it in such a like amazing way. It made me want to buy one. Um, this upcycle approach to fashion and her really refined eye has led to her becoming a semi-finalist for, for this year's LVMH prize. I interviewed her last year and from our conversation I got the sense that innovation is really important to her, how we look at materials is really important to her, and slowing down the industry is really important to her. And I think for me that lies in stark contrast to the machine that Balenciaga has created where more is more and, and, and profit reigns supreme and product reigns supreme. Um, there's a real care to everything that Hodakova kind of puts out there. I think it's really easy to be cynical when it comes to this idea of, of upcycling in a high fashion space because again this idea that making money is kind of what drives fashion. But Hodakova really approaches it from this refined sensibility, this refined poetic sensibility that I always find really exciting and inspiring to watch. So a few looks this season that really stood out to me was this leather dress that was crafted from leather trouser waistbands kind of stacked together. Again, leather belts were featured prominently and woven together in this like crisscross pattern. She also reworked negligee into this amazing dress kind of paneled with um, fishnets. And I think Kodakova is just just really beautifully taking these discarded materials and and creating something entirely new from a place that makes me optimistic about how 
upcycling can change the fashion system and change it in a way that's ultimately, you know, beautiful and desirable and not not just a means to an end. Um, but that's just me. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Did you love the Balenciaga show? Are you rooting for Hodakova to win the LVMH prize? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.